Uh, if you guys did not know, Tokyo Game Show is happening right now, and both Bandai Namco and um, Koei Tecmo are showing off Monster Rancher stuff, uh, Ultra Kaiju Monster Rancher specifically. They dropped a bunch of new info, and this trailer is kind of the crux of it. You know, this is the most important bit. How's the volume? I think it's okay. Daily life of a kaiju breeder. So, preface this. This is from the English version of the game, but not the Western version of the game. I know that sounds bizarre, and you're like, the fuck does he mean by that? Um, there are three versions of this game currently being worked on, or it's all the same game, but three different localizations. There's Japanese, they, there is the Western, like American, and then there is Southeast Asia, which is also an English version, but is probably going to be a slightly different localization than what we are used to in uh, the West. While I say that, the localization is kind of goofy, so it's actually more of the same. When they showed off the like English English trailer, like the American trailer forever ago, it had better localization than the Southeast Asian trailer, even though it was, you know, English as well. So. This might not be the final English trailer we get. We might get another one with like more info, but uh, we'll find out, you know. It's complicated. They can't make it easy for us. You're saving up for a sub? Well, there you go. You got one. First thing, Song of My People, right off the hop. There we go. I don't want to be in the way. Birth! <laughs> That shit killed me the first time I saw it. Birth. This might be uh, slightly different in the English version of the trailer, but you know. Find a kaiju partner. So they talked about this. There's five different ways to create monsters in this game. Uh, you can use the CD database the same way you can in DX. You can use an encyclopedia. So every monster that you've spawned shows up in the encyclopedia, like in Monster Rancher 3 and 4. It's cool. They have uh, NFC stuff where, like, if you use amiibos or NFC cards, you can tap to get monsters that way. There's a lot of cool stuff. NFC Ultra Dimension cards. So that's uh, stuff from the Ultra Kaiju games from like before. This isn't new stuff. Um, there were NFC cards with old Ultraman games in the past. UMF codes that are listed. Okay, so... Yeah. What kind of kaiju will it be? Do Amiibos have NFC chips? They do. Komara! <laughs> Komotaro. Okay, uh, let's take a look at his stats. This is a bulky boy, eh? He's got... High life, power, and defense, and just kind of garbo other stats. I'm. It's gonna take me so long to get over intelligence and speed swapping colors. I mean, I'll get used to it eventually, but it throws me off way more than it should. Baku stats, kinda. It, yeah, it's kind of like golem stats, except it's high life and the defense is a little bit lower. So you might be right in saying Baku. I actually, wonder if these values are basically just one to nine hundred ninety nine, the bonus at zero at the end. I mean, it says right here, right, out of ten thousand. I think that uh, answers your question. The thing that I'm interested in is that these bars have like a gray bit at the end, but it makes me think that there's a way to like overdrive your stats. So I think this could be interesting or it's just a really bad interface choice. Like it's just really bad GUI, but it does make me think that uh, you will be able to like boost your stats over. These seem to be literally just um, stats based on, or like letter grades based on how high your stats are. This is not like ability to raise the stat, I don't think. I think G is just everything under 1,000. F is probably from like 1,000 to 1,500. E is probably 1,500 to 2,000. You know what I mean? So that's what I think this is. Uh, it's cool that it tells you guts recovery right up here. I mean, you could figure it out by entering a battle. Um, I wonder if there's like anything lower than sluggish, move speed sluggish. It does look like just kind of a uh, big tanky boy though. That's kind of cool. Gomotaro. 
I don't know enough about Japanese to know why that's a cute name. Um, I'm a big fan of Zoidberg. I don't know their names. We got Robbie the Robot. We got Zoidberg. We got Money Clam. We got Upside Down Robbie the Robot. Kakatorimon. The Cheese Grater. And then the Cheese Grater Forma Del Fuego. I don't know. New main sub's gonna wreck me for a while to learn them. It's gonna take a while. So far, from what I've seen, Gonku, who's not in this, unfortunately. Uh, Adada and uh, Zoidberg are my favorites. This guy too. This is such a goofy face. I'm a fan. You can be born through the field guide. So that's what I was talking about. The encyclopedia. Anybody you've made shows up again. You can just make them whenever you want. There's a button, a cry button. It's Pokemon now. Let's go. Go to Red King. Even beefier Bug Boy. I think Red King is like the golem of this game from what I've seen. Alien Baltans got high intelligence, skill, and speed. Really low life. Power and defense. We know that stat gains and base stats are not the same thing. For some monsters, it's drastically different. Like Mach, for example, has incredibly high base life and just a minimum life gain. But yeah, Baltan is looking like a Pixie type character because Pixie doesn't actually have great skill gains. They're like fine, but it's more intelligence and speed. And then Dada is a little bit more even. So this might be more of like a, a tiger type. If that is like the tiger type, if we get like a high critical hit monster, that'd be sick. I wonder how like one to one they're gonna be. There's only so many different archetypes you can make, right? Training. Let's bring him in the farm. Hell yeah. He's quite lively. So they're just showing that there's different training you can do. We saw the fast forward button before. Uh, fast forward in this game seems like really quick. Like incredibly fast. So I'm pretty excited about that. You develop their abilities through various training exercises. Again, the frame rate here is like legitimately atrocious. It looks so, so bad, but you know, I'm okay with the game otherwise. You're done training at the ranch. Take your kaiju on a trip to town. Oh no. <laughs> I like how there's like the city gates and it's like, how did he get in here? What's going on here? Cookie shop. Makes power easier to raise with drills. So there are these cookies that you can give them. Looks like it's me talking. But no, there's a little lady there. Her name is Feline. Feline. This might be like this game's equivalent of plus ones on drills. You know, how you can like use ghost chips to get a plus one on dodge. So I don't know why it would be called Inheritance Cookie Shop if it had nothing to do with like inheriting stats from someone else. I don't know. Hearts or feedable disc chips? Yeah, it could be one or the other. Eating a cookie here grants you special traits, effects, and ability bonus. What's this guy? This guy doesn't even have a face. This guy's sick. Oh my god, it's the penguin dude. Withering tech boost? This is sick. There's so much cool shit you can do here. Cubus ice tech boost. So we already knew that. Um, God, I gotta move all the way up here, don't I? We already knew that um, there were elements back in this game. We saw uh, fire and ice earlier. So this is this is kind of cool. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Makes speed easier to raise with drills. Get a little bit of intelligence and speed. This is sick. Recover anger more easily when resting at the ranch. That's dude. There's so many cool things here. So this is like an ease of use type one, and then there's other ones for like plus withering to be like super annoying. A lot of stuff you can do. Pretty cool. They're adding a lot of stuff to this game that is like seems like ideas that they wanted to do with Monster Rancher that they just never did. So I think this game is, from what I've seen so far, I think it's gonna probably stand alone as like a legitimately good Monster Rancher game, even if you know. It's missing the main draw of Monster Rancher, which is the monsters. Let's fight in a tournament! I don't think they showed anything in the fighting that we didn't already know. That's a cool angle, though. Rigid Core Iron Fist Rocket. Little, little unwieldy of a name. We're not, I'm not saying that shit every time on stream. Oh, he goes for the Iron Core Ridge Fist Rocket. Oh, 32% chance to hit. Oh, he hit him. I'm, I'm not saying that shit. Is there any idea of how many main breeds? I think 26. Anyway. 
Jammy Pots are back. Jammy Pots are back. Hope you guys like having really limited inventory space. Super oscillatory wave. So they don't call it sharpness anymore. They just straight up call it critical. That's a thing they started in Monster Rancher 3. Which is fine, because I mean, as a kid I had no idea what the fuck sharpness meant. I wish they had damage values instead of just letter grades. Starting in Monster Rancher 3 onwards, they had damage values beside everything. It's a very, very specific design choice to go with letter grades for things instead of actual values. And it's a choice the devs make because they don't want the game to feel too solved or too solvable. And there's value in that, right? But like, if you think of like Pokemon, for example, Pokemon, the first two generations didn't actually tell you uh, any damage values for anything. And then in Crystal onward, they started, you know, telling you damage values. And they made a choice that like, this is, there's so many attacks, there's so many attacks in the game, so many different moves. The player needs to know what they're doing, right? For something like this, to go with letter grades, it, is much more appealing to a casual audience than it is to a hardcore audience, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Like I said, it's just a design choice they made. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure we'll have these numbers data mined pretty quickly. We'll know what's what probably a couple of weeks into the game at the absolute latest. But it's just kind of interesting to me that they went back to this. They have so many other things in the game that are like good quality of life changes, like showing you stress and fatigue on the ranch and things like that, which are really good. And they help not only longtime players, but they help new players as well. But a choice like this is like very, very obviously like they put a line in the sand that like they want it to be more fun and palatable to new players, which is totally cool. I don't think exact numbers are needed to play the game casually. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They're needed to play the game competitively. He looks a little tired. He looks big tired. Wait a minute. Oh no. Oh no, don't get stressed out. You won't like me when I'm angry. Oh, there goes the windmill. Oh shit. So, they can fuck up your ranch if they get too stressed out and too angry. Um, that was a thing in Monster Rancher 1 as well, and then they never used it ever again. That happens in 1 if your monster is really stressed, yeah. Yeah, so this is, uh, Penguin Mon. I think that's his name. Oh, he's dead. Hey, you got the Gemini pot. Only nine more to go. This is really cool. Fear decreased, dependence increased. Maybe dependence is spoil. Maybe it is. But, uh, and they just use a different word for it, but either way, it's really interesting because spoil and fear are not, uh, terms that existed in the game anywhere. They're just community-made terms. So it's kind of interesting that they're like, yeah, you know what, let's just keep those terms. Shooting star time. He's exhausted all his strength. This man looks sad as hell, but he's smiling. Leave them with the Breeders Association and let them rest. See you later! So I don't know if it shows up on the screen, but it's got this like really neat canvas texture. Like this canvas overlay. It looks nice. It's a really fun stylistic choice. Which is neat because, to be completely honest, this game hasn't had a lot of like specific stylistic stuff happening in it. COMBINING! No dead kaiju at least? Yeah, maybe not. Are we the slug man? Mm, yes. Customizable avatar? You might be out of luck. Might be playing the wrong game. Also, this music is like distinctly not Monster Rancher. I don't know if this is a song from Ultra Kaiju or something. It's kind of cute though. It's kind of a nice tune. Melba Gamora. This man's made a toast. In combination variations, there are over 200 kinds of kaiju. A lot. A monster rancher needs to sound like I'm at the circus. Well, now you're in uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. Ace Killer looks sick in this game. Is this supposed to look like a zipper? I don't think it is, but it's very funny considering like the rubber suit aesthetic. 
Let's raise cool and cute kaiju. You know, that's what we're here for. I'm going to say it's a zipper. So October 20th, 2022. This isn't new. We already knew this. Released on... <laughs> also, guess who's back? Guess who's back? We got Science Party Mochi. You can raise a 40-foot tall mochi. You know, you already know I'm going to be raising a mochi. I'm pretty excited. So I'm a little bit worried about how weird this is going to look. Mainly because none of the monsters in this game have facial animations. Silver Peach is a pre-order exclusive? Yeah, also Silver Peach. And a Smoke Snake. You know, my favorite item. One that nobody else in the world uses except for me. But I find plenty of use in Smoke Snakes. Makes an ooh face in one? Oh, okay, well I'm sold then. You know, that's all I needed to hear. Get two original Ultra Dimension cards when you purchase Ultra Kaiju Monster Rancher. So, these would be really cool. I'm probably not going to get the physical because I want to play it on the 20th and it is absolutely not going to come in by the 20th. So, you can download the kaijus your friends have raised and duel with them. I don't know if that is literal. It does say download kaiju data. I don't know if it works the same way as DX or if you can literally download save data, which is pretty sick. It looks like manual versus manual is on a single screen still. They don't have any actual online play, which is, you know, still kind of crappy, but we have our reasons for not really playing PvP. I would like to play PvP. I would like to play some PvP though. Concerned about the lack of freezer shown? Yeah, that could be an issue. Um, I don't know. How would combining work without the freezer for the shrine instead? I, yeah, honestly, man, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. That's uh, still to be discovered. That's something for us to figure out in October, I think. 